Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Devyani and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a few things you should be learning back in India before you come to UK to do your master's degree. And this is really going to help you get a better grade, have a better competitive advantage than your peers. Only if I knew, like I'm doing my master's in international marketing at King's College London. And honestly, I had no idea about these things before. Only if I knew, things would have been so much easier for me. So I thought, why not share it with you so that you guys have that advantage and it's going to be very helpful for you. See, so if you're waiting for your offer letter or if you're waiting for your visa process to get started, just hold on, learn these things and it's going to be so, so helpful for you. So if you find this video helpful, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a like and let's just get into it. So the first thing is references and citations. So back in India, when we made a PPT or when we made like a word document or something like that, most of us just picked up things from the internet and put it in a doc and it was done. But in UK, that is considered as plagiarism. So whatever you pick out from the internet, be it from a website, a YouTube video, a journal article, anything, it has to be referenced properly. So otherwise, it's like you have copied and then you will get a big fat zero. So there is a correct way to do referencing. So there are two kinds of referencing usually people use, which is the Harvard style referencing and the APA style referencing. So I'm going to teach you how to do referencing and in-text citations using my individual project. So this might be a bit long and very detailed. So if you get bored, you can definitely skip to the next part. But if you're interested, please stay along and I'll teach you how it's done. So let us look at the introduction. Okay, so the very first line I've written that Lego ranks 71st best global brands in the world. How did I get this information? I got this from Interbank 2021. So whatever facts you write, you have to write which source you got them from. So here I got it from Interbank. So as you can see, like even if I write like a number which compared to 1261 GBP, where did I get this information from? From Statista. So whatever information I've written between two brackets is called an index citation. So as you, again, you can see your uh, Indians have a collectivist mindset. How do I know it? I don't know it. Shrimp and Sharma, they did their research and they told me that. So if you see, these are all index citations and everywhere in the document, I have to write that. So I cannot assume everything. All of my assignment is based on proof. So when you do index citations, you have to write proper referencing as well. Let us look at Shrimp and Sharma we looked like now. So at the end of the document, you write all of your references together, which are supposed to be in alphabetical order. So it does not matter if the first one was interband, doesn't matter. It will go under the I part, things like that. So let us look at Shrimp and Sharma. The so he, see here, Shrimp and Sharma is 1987. So this is the reference. So how do we get this link? So this is a Harvard style referencing. So there is a certain way you have to do it and you can't do, just do it any way you want. So let us look at an example. I'm going to show you how it's done. So in the introduction here, you can see this one. You can read it in your time. But uh, this is a quote and information I got from Bava 2004. So how did I get this information? So let us go on Google. So I was searching through a lot of articles and I stumbled upon this article by Anupam Bhava. And I was like, oh, okay. And then this information, this line interested me. So the Made in India label, as you can see here, here I've written the Made in India label. So uh, when you do referencing, whatever you find on Google, you can't just copy paste it. So you have to write it in your own words. That means you have to paraphrase it. So then you just take this. Um, okay, I like this information. I write it here and give him credit. So how to do referencing? So there is this website called Cite This For Me. Uh, you can go here directly. So, um, okay, so you have to say add new reference. So this is Harvard style. So as you can see here, it's Harvard style. Then you go here and copy this link because this is a journal article. Is it a website or journal article? And you select this and control V and let it search for you. So as you can see, Anupam Bhava, it automatically came because this is an article by Anupam Bhava. Then if you see, um, this is from 2004. So sometimes you will have to manually check everything that if they have done the right thing, the spelling is right and things like that. Then automatically volume number, everything is generated and do add reference. And here, as you can see, Bhava 2004 is an in-text citation. And this is the entire information, uh, which is a reference. So you just say, copy bibliography citation x and when you come to the document and you go down um, under b when you just control b 
this will come here so this is how referencing is done so not just word articles but also powerpoint presentations have to have proper citations so as you can see here like this was my project for tefrico and these were all the citations i have used all the websites i have used to make this ppt so it's just everywhere the second thing i'm going to talk about some people might know about it some people might not know about it is called google scholar so in uk credible resources are very important so back in india like if you want to make like a presentation you just google it get some information of wikipedia the first few links you make the presentation and you submit it so much easy but in uk you cannot do that you have to only use credible resources so you can use again like forbes wall street new york times but the most respected one is google scholar so let us take for example we have taken example use of color pink in consumer behavior if you want to make like a presentation on that and you open the first few articles this, this is the one i opened right now and also like this one inside marketing so let us look at these pages okay so if you take information from this page is it credible enough that is the question you need to ask then probably not because have you heard about this uk post page no who has written the article we don't know so this is not backed up by research or any data so you should not refer or use these articles this is also like insights marketing has anybody does anybody know about these sites no it's just probably like a marketing blog thing then what you have to do is go to google scholar so this is a completely different page as you can see here google scholar and then you put in a uh, use of color pink in consumer behavior and here you can see proper journal articles so i'm just going to open like a few of them uh, the first three probably role of color so as you can see here this is written by proper credible people this is an academic paper so it has a proper research has been done so sometimes you can't get access to all of the papers so you get, can get it through a university which i'm not going to show you how to do it in this video but as you can see here like introduction da, da, da. then if i do the control and say pink okay uh pink so this is what they mean by that so on google scholar you can find all the proper information and try to use this as your main guide and don't just rely on these random websites so google scholar is your best friend so make sure whatever information you take from google scholar is properly referenced so that you don't lose marks for plagiarism turn it in and plagiarism So back in India, when you make like a presentation, what do you do? You usually mail it to your teacher or like put it in the USB and just send it or just add it to your college laptop. So if you are from Mumbai University and if your friend is from Delhi University, there is no way the teachers are going to know that you have literally made the same presentation, you know. But it's not the case in India. So all the universities use Turnitin to submit their assignments. So for turn it in, let us see an example. So this is my exam submission link. It is assessed. So as you can see here, the plagiarism count is shown. So nineteen percent of whatever answers I have submitted are plagiarized. So let us look at how turn it in works. Yeah. So turn it in is a place where all the universities submit their answers or assignments there. So whatever you put, like for example, let us look at the score. So this. I click it here. So this exact part was submitted to King's College London. Um, that makes sense because this was given to us by the teachers. But whatever you use, this sentence. Uh, they tend to be well educated. So I click on this, and it shows me that which business article have you taken it from. You know, it is exactly like you cannot copy. Not just that. If you can see here, I'm gonna click on that once. So this was submitted to University of Iowa, like cost of manufacturer. So you have to be as precise and as you know as ah uh, to the point as possible. Try to make your own sentences because they are going to know. So if you see like King's College London, um, so this was submitted to King's College London a while ago. So you can exactly they can trace, ah, uh, where you have got your information from. so you have to try to be like try to be below 30% for your uh, marks otherwise they're going to know and if turn it in knows then the teachers can see like whatever in text citations you have used are they really from that place are they valid enough and things like that not even kidding from the very beginning no never ever to copy from any source if you decide to copy an idea do proper referencing like i have taught you before and this is taken very seriously in the uk 
so the fourth thing you should learn is writing research papers so most russell group universities in uk and of course a lot of universities need a very official research paper kind of approach you can't just write anything in a very informal way so you need to understand how to write an abstract how to write an executive summary you know how to write divide your work professionally in a very proper sense you will have to write so many reports while you're here and you can't just use that casual approach you have to be very professional about it so i really recommend you to go and watch some youtube videos of how to write proper research papers how to write a proper executive summary and things like that you can find these courses on coursera and things like that if you want me to make a video about it do comment down below i would definitely do that for you so the next thing i'm going to talk to you about is not much of a learning but a thing you should know to make notes Like in India, when teacher used to like teachers used to like bring out a book and write notes or just have like printouts of notes and things like that. But it is not very practical here because the lectures are really long and teachers speak really fast, so you really can't cope up, you know. And even for printouts, oh my god, it's damn expensive. Like, like one printout in London area I have seen is like for like hundred rupees, literally one page for hundred rupees. So it's not at all affordable in any way. So most often than not people make notes on their laptop so i really recommend you to use one note for it of course not sponsored but i have been using one note and it is so convenient so i'm going to teach you how it works so this is one note so if you have like microsoft word or powerpoint you're going to have this so what you have to do in one note is you can create different books for different subjects so for this example i've created a book called devyani so here you can add new sections like for example i just rename it and call it week 1 um and week 2 and things like that like for example let's look at marketing theory and practice maybe in week 6 so whatever the teacher teaches about in all of the notes you can take screenshots of different topics so this is economic based pricing economic value analysis and things like that and it becomes so much easier for you so like if you go like for example international marketing then you have your notes ready right now so i'm doing um international e service marketing so whatever the requirements were i have made my notes here um and it's so so convenient so week 2 notes are here and so the next thing you should learn and also which is very important is start reading from your laptop because i was so used to having like a physical copy of like big big books just scrolling and then highlighting and all of that which does not happen here because as i mentioned it's very expensive to have printouts so you have to read just from your laptop like during project times i used to be reading like 50 journal articles and things like that and literally because we are not used to initially i was like oh my god like i'm just staring at my laptop for so long it becomes so tiresome so before coming just start you know getting used to reading and gaining information online how to use the highlight tool on your laptop and things like that so when you get here is not going to be like oh my god i just can't read off my laptop it's such a inconvenience for me so that you will be accustomed so that is an advice i would give so the last thing i'm going to ask you to learn is spss so if you're a law student or something like that don't worry about it but if you're like a business student like if you're studying marketing management hr even psychology this software is very important and honestly like before coming here i had no idea about the existence and it's a pretty hard one like it was you should know about it start learning about it start getting acquainted with the application start learning what is a variable independent variable dependent variable learn how to do tests so that you're going to save so much time here because literally i i used to study for like literally to learn spss i used to study for like 13 14 hours a day and still i'm like oh my god this software is so hard so when you get a hang of it of course it's going to be easier for you but i think having that skill before coming here it's going to be a huge plus point even while getting jobs later if you're from the business point of view you can say okay i know spss yes it's a huge skill you want to have and try learning about it i'm adding a few links in the description box below of linkedin learning and things like that where from where you can learn and understand what the software is all about just to be sure maybe you can mail your university and ask them okay does my curriculum have spss or talk to some alumni so for kings i'm telling you yes you do need spss and marketing um actually a lot of universities do need spss and marketing so make sure you learn that and these are the six skills you should know before coming to uk i hope this video was useful for you if you're looking for accommodations check out this video if you're looking for anything else check out my uk playlist and stay tuned bye